In this lecture, I will talk to you about uh, uh, debris flow monitoring and uh, warning. And uh, I will start with a definition of what a debris flow is. Uh, a debris flow can be defined as a type of mass movement that may occur in uh, mountain torrents, suddenly occur in mountain torrents, and uh, it appears uh, as a wave with a steep front consisting mainly of boulders, and uh, it consists of a mixture of uh, very poorly sorted sediments in water uh, that range from boulder size fragments uh, down to clay. And uh, after this steep front, uh, the flow height diminishes until it appears just as muddy water. This is a, is a definition, but then the best way to show what the debris flow is, is uh, look at one of these phenomena. And uh, I will show you a, a video now uh, that has been shot in uh, the Gadria torrent, which is uh, an instrumented catchment uh, located in the Bozen uh, province. And uh, it has been equipped by the Bozen province, uh, Dr. Pierpaolo Macconi. And um, here we go. This, uh, this video has been shot uh, last summer in 2013. And um, I will comment the the video so that the definition that I gave is, uh, can be followed just uh, through the images. This is the torrent. The, the check dam that you can see in the front uh, ground is uh, more or less two meters high. The wings also are two meters high and the width is about eight meters. So you can appreciate the dimension of this uh, sudden flow that can be of course uh, very destructive. Uh, a few years ago here in, in Piedmont, uh, one of these phenomena just swept away a building, a three-story building, and um, causing several casualties in, in Rio Garen, close to Torre Pellice. So um, this uh, particular um, instrumented basin uh, is uh, currently under investigation within a new European project named Sedalp, and uh, the um, equipment installed in that uh, uh, basin uh, consists of several different types of, of device. Which one? Of course, uh, when we talk about monitoring and warning uh, of the brief flows, it's not so easy to keep uh, these two fields uh, separate one from each other because the devices that you use uh, uh, for monitoring uh, are very uh, often the same that you can use as, uh, in, the warn in building warning systems. Uh, in any case, I will try in this uh, lecture to, uh, to keep these two fields separate, starting with the monitoring uh, devices and the uh, monitoring uh, systems that are used for this, uh, for this phenomenon. So let's, let's talk about monitoring, de monitoring devices for debris flows. Uh, here you can see a table that has been published by um, Japanese uh, researcher in, back in uh, 2005, um, Yasumasa Itakura, who is a good friend and uh, worked with us uh, in the Moscardo Torrent uh, several, several years ago, um, is summarized in this uh, table the main uh, devices employed for the monitoring of, the, of debris flows. Let's see some, some of them. Well, of course, rain gauges are uh, widely used to uh, collect the, the, the information regarding the rainfalls that can trigger uh, the debris flow itself. Then we have the, the stage sensors uh, to monitor the, the stage level in the, in the torrent. There are different types of this. Uh, you, the, the, the picture here show um, what is called an ultrasonic sensor, but then also a radar sensor or um, also laser sensor can be used for the same purpose. Then we have uh, the, the broad family of contact sensors. Here you can see wire sensor. Uh, and then we have ground vibration sensors that can be used also for, the, for, for monitoring debris flows. You can see in the picture um, what is called a seismometer. But then we also have uh, geophones, underground microphones, uh, hydro, hydrophones, all, here you can see a geophone, 
all uh, of this family measuring the, uh, the ground vibration produced by, by debris flows. Uh, we then also have, and they are not mentioned in this list, the um, pendulums. And um, in this other table, um, Itakura summarizes the main parameters that can be monitored and measured through these different types of device. So you see depth, velocity, mean front velocity, uh, discharge, volume, uh, impact pressure, and so on. Itakura also um, indicates with the different uh, symbols, uh, the, the, the different um, types of, of parameters that can be measured by the devices. Now let's, let's talk about uh, stage sensors to, to just to start. Um, in, the, in this photograph you can see the um, ultrasonic sensors. We are in the, in the Moscardo torrent here. And uh, the stage sensor can be uh, employed to measure and uh, estimate different types of information. One of these is the velocity, the mean velocity of the front. And uh, uh, this is usually measured uh, using two or more uh, stage sensors, ultrasonic sensors placed at a known distance along the torrent. And knowing the distance uh, between the two stations and the time elapsed between the appearance of the front at the, sec and the, at the first and second uh, uh, sensor, you can estimate the velocity. Um, I was uh, mentioning the front because the, the typical hydrograph uh, that is measured through a stage sensor uh, is, appears like this, you can see in this photo. Um, and um, usually the front is very easily recognized in the picture, so you can, in the hydrograph, so you can use that uh, appearance as a, uh, a feature to measure to determine velocity. Then also impact force can be est estimated uh, indirectly, of course, measuring and knowing uh, the velocity. And then finally also the volume. Um, in, in literature, uh, the volume is, uh, has been um, proposed as, a, as one of the parameters that can be uh, measured through uh, a stage sensor um, using that formula and uh, employing the um, mean velocity of the front uh, as a, a constant velocity along the entire debris flow wave. Uh, this particular formula, which gives, of course, a, a rough estimate, has never been tested in the field. And the, the Galeria Torrent uh, offers a, a specific and par very particular uh, opportunity to, to estimate, to make an estimation of the, of the goodness of this formula, because right, be, uh, right downstream of the uh, video camera that uh, shot the, the video that uh, I showed you before, there is another video camera that is shooting downstream, and uh, downstream of, of those installations, there, are, there is a, a large deposition basin with a slit check dam that is particularly uh, favorable for um, estimating and testing the formula that uh, I showed you before to, to, for the estimation of the volume. I will now show you a, a, a video that has been shot uh, the very same day of the, of the event that I showed you before and uh, that has been taken with this uh, other video camera shooting uh, downstream. You can see the uh, slit uh, check dam, and uh, this, uh, this video, which takes, uh, is, is, is about 35, 40 minutes long, has been shortened here just to show you that the most part of the material uh, remains deposited in the basin, in the deposition basin. You will see now uh, several uh, subsequent surges arriving in the, in, the, in, the image, in the images, and you will see that uh, just a little part, a little portion of the, um, of the mixture just flow downstream of the slit. Um, the main part just deposits in the basin. You can see it here. You, if, you, if you follow this uh, arriving surge, you will see that this practically com completely deposited in, within the basin. This uh, allowed us to make um, an extraordinary um, test for 
comparing the results obtained here is another search, comparing the, the, the measurement obtained through the stage sensors, the, the estimation made through the stage sensor, with the um, actual volume deposited in, the, in this basin that was surveyed using um, terrestrial laser scan techniques, photogrammetic techniques, and so on. The, the results show that uh, the formula that I showed you before uh, overestimates the, the volume of about uh, 50%. The volume deposited uh, uh, in this, uh, for with the, in, in the occasion of this event was uh, estimated through the terrestrial laser scan in uh, about uh, 8,000 cu cubic meters, while the formula that I showed you before estimated a volume of about uh, uh, 15, 14, 15,000 uh, cubic meters. If you consider also that about uh, 1,500 cubic meters just flow it down through the slit, you can uh, obtain the, the rough estimation that I gave you, I gave you before. So this uh, uh, specific uh, um, instrumented basin is uh, particularly prone for uh, um, making estimations of the uh, possibility to measure the volume through the, uh, through the use of uh, stage sensors. Um, so researches are, are currently going on and we expect to um, obtain uh, interesting results in the, in the few coming years. Now, another tool that is very important in, in, in uh, monitoring the brief flows, uh, given their uh, field characteristics that impede, uh, impede the, the use of, uh, of uh, contact sensors, such uh, use the, commonly used in hydraulics, I mean um, current meters or weighers. Of course, uh, it's not possible to use these tools in, in monitoring the brief flows. So video cameras can be particularly useful and uh, I think that the two uh, videos that I showed you uh, are a good demonstration of, of what I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, video cameras have been also employed to uh, measure surface velocity through the video image processing. Um, and so uh, stage sensors and video cameras are broadly used in the, in the monitoring of these, of these phenomena. Then we, we have the, the broad class of uh, ground vibration sensors. As I mentioned before, there are um, seismometers, geophones, uh, uh, microphones, hydrophones that can be used. And um, processing the raw data that comes from these uh, type of, of uh, sensor, uh, one can, can obtain the, the graph uh, that I showed you, that I'm showing here, and again, it's very easy to, to recognize the passage of the main front and also the passage of uh, secondary waves if they are present. So also these uh, sense, also the ground vibration sensor can therefore be used uh, uh, to measure, to make measurements such as uh, mean front velocity, the velocity of secondary waves, um, and also to detect the wave form of the phenomenon that is uh, taking place in the torrent. Now, let's skip and, uh, and talk a little bit about warning systems, even though uh, it's not possible, as I told you before, to keep these two fields completely separated uh, with, the, with each other. Um, warning systems can be classified uh, in two main uh, big uh, categories. Advanced warning systems that are based mainly on the use of uh, um, rainfall measurements to predict the, the possibility to have uh, a debris flow and so spread a warning, or uh, the so-called uh, event warning systems. Uh, this classification comes from Hunger, 1987, and, uh, and the event warning, as the, the word itself says, uh, are those uh, sensors that can then in the, those systems that can detect the occurrence of the debris flow during the uh, event itself. We can spread, we can share again these two systems uh, separating the contact, the, the contact sensors from the remote sensors. So let's see an, an example of, of contact sensors. Uh, of course, the wire sensor that I show you before in the list produced by Itakura. Um, 
this is one of the most common sensor employed in the monitoring of and warning of debris flows. Of course, it needs ma maintenance after the, the event. Another type of uh, contact sensor is the, the pendulum. You can see an example here. We are in the Morien Valley in, in France, in the San Bernard catchment. And you can see here three different pendulums uh, placed in the torrent. And they just gave a warning through a, a, a teletransmitting the, the datum down to the village uh, downstream. Here is another example of use of uh, pendulums in, in the Ravoir torrent, also in France. And, uh, and then there is the broad uh, class of, of remote sensors. One of the, the, the first is, of course, this, the stage sensor. Here is an ultrasonic sensor um, used to, to monitor the, the passage of the flow. And, uh, of course, when you, when you use remote sensors, you need uh, to introduce the concept of, uh, of an algorithm to, to detect the passage of the brief flow for spreading a warning. And, um, a possible uh, algorithm consists simply in, in measuring the, the difference between uh, the stage uh, in, in few seconds. And if this uh, difference uh, overcomes a certain threshold, let's say 20 centimeters, this, the warning can be spread. Of course, it's better to have uh, more than, than one of these sensors along the torrent to avoid the uh, false alarms caused by the passage of animals or also human beings or something of the sort. Um, in, in, in recent uh, um, researches activity, however, the attention has been, uh, this is just in, during the few years, the few last years, has been moved on the use of, of ground vibration sensors. The reason is, is uh, quite simple, because video cameras, stage sensors, pendulums, and all, all of this uh, type of, of sensor require to be hanged ab above the torrent. And this uh, can cause several problems, uh, several difficulties. One of these is, is when the, the torrent, uh, and as it often occurs, just deviates its, its path. In that case, the, the, the sensor may be, not, may be no more able to detect the passage of the debris flow simply because it's not more there. Another difficulty is given by the, the destruction of the uh, sustaining uh, structure. Because of the destructive power of these phenomena, the, the sustaining structures can be destroyed, and so you lose the sensor and also the possibility to spread a warning. Uh, therefore, the attention has been moved on the use of uh, uh, ground vibration sensors, because they have several advantages. First of all, they, have, they are passive sensors. They do not require power supply. So in this case, uh, uh, moving and, and having to apply and install these uh, systems in, in high mountain environment where the power supply often is not available. It's uh, a passive sensor is uh, much more uh, prone to, the use, uh, uh, to be used. Then uh, they are not particularly affected by the deviation of the torrent bed because they are placed, uh, uh, of course, uh, outside of the path of the, of the debris flow. And if they, the debris flow uh, move his, uh, his path, the sensor is still capable of measuring its, uh, the, the, the occurrence of the flow. There is no need of, to be suspended above the torrent. And uh, the detection of the arrival of the debris flow can, be, can occur at a distance. And for this reason, the, the passage of the debris flow can be detected several seconds before its arrival at the section where the, the sensor is installed. Um, Moreover, the, this type of sensor can, de can detect uh, different and obtain different information regarding the debris flow, such as the intensity of the ground vibration velocity and the frequency of the signal can, that can be used for warning purposes, as I will show you uh, in a few minutes. Um, in this uh, picture, you can see an hydrograph obtained through a stage sensor compared to the, uh, to the graph obtained with, the, uh, with a ground vibration sensor. And uh, as you can see from this line, the ground vibration uh, detector is capable of detecting the arrival of the debris flow several seconds before its passage close to the, where the sensor is placed. If you use a stage sensor, like in this case, you only detect the passage of the flow when the, when the flow is 
under the sensor. So uh, this is a big advantage, particularly when, when you use these sensors to protect um, infrastructures, such as roads or railways, where you can stop the traffic to protect uh, the users and uh, 60 seconds of advance uh, are very, can be very important. Also in this case, you, you need, of course, to use uh, uh, an algorithm. And you can use the same algorithm that I showed you before, except that you, can, uh, you have to apply the algorithm not to the stage, of course, but to the intensity of the ground vibration. Um, so if you, in, in, you detect uh, an increase of the uh, intensity of the ground vibration that occurs in, within a few seconds, you can set uh, the alarm. This type of algorithm has been used uh, and studied both in the Ilgraben torrent in, in Switzerland and also in the Rebaixa there in, in, in Spain. In the Gadria torrent, we have uh, installed uh, um, an equipment, a new recording equipment that is capable also of uh, measuring the frequency. And here is uh, the, the one of the first results that we have obtained uh, this year last year in 2013, you can see with the green line the um, main frequency of the event and with the blue line the, uh, the graph recorded through the geophone. And what you, you can see here is a, a sudden drop of the frequency which uh, passed from 50 hertz down to 10, about 10, and then keeps more or less content. Actually there is a trend, a growing trend, a little growing trend here, but however, the, the, the frequency can be easily detected to be much lower than before the arrival of the flow, and this drop in frequency occurs exactly um, 60, about 50, 60 seconds before the arrival of the debris flow at the sensor. So also this information uh, regarding frequency can, is very promising uh, as far as uh, warning algorithm is concerned, because if we will find that this occurrence is, uh, is uh, common, is, is every, every debris flow show this particular pattern for the, velocity, for the frequency, this information will be, it will be possible to use also the, this information in preparing um, um, consistent and robust uh, warning system, warning algorithm. Um, actually, also in, in, in uh, Austria, uh, the Bocchi University um, researchers are uh, investigating precisely the use of um, um, microphone uh, in, the, in the band of, of low frequencies to detect the passage of, uh, of debris flow. So this is a particularly uh, interesting uh, feature of debris flows that is investigated um, exactly during this, uh, these years. Um, in the Gary Torrent, we have uh, uh, designed and installed uh, a multifunction recording unit of a new conception that can be um, in, uh, precisely employed for the detection uh, and the warning for the brief flows. Um, this, particular, uh, this particular recording unit is uh, capable of uh, using a changeable amplification of the signal so that, uh, as I told you before, uh, see if the if the the brief flow moves uh, it's it's bad during from one year to the other you can just uh, change uh, easily change the amplification of the signal and be able to detect uh, the debris flow even if it moves farther from the from the sensor of course you can you can also move the sensor but uh, the, the possibility to change the amplification is particularly important um, Different processing methods are um, implemented on board because uh, I will not talk about this issue here, but there are different methods to process the rough data coming from the geophone, and uh, we are studying uh, this, uh, this matter to identify which is the best way to process the data. And uh, as I mentioned before, and I also show you a graph, the, the, the recording unit can uh, detect uh, uh, the frequency of the signal, and then also the ratio uh, STA um, LTA, which is the short term average uh, above the long term average, which is particularly uh, a particularly useful information for warning al algorithms. 
uh, this uh, particular recording unit has been uh, um, uh, designed, uh, constructed and installed uh, in collaboration with uh, an Italian company which is collaborating uh, in the researches in the Gadria Torrent, uh, which is the SIAP Makers uh, company. You can see here the, the, the unit installed in the Gadria and uh, uh, here below on the right there is a uh, um, a photograph taken from the, the video that I showed you at the beginning and with the red dots it's uh, indicated more or less the position of this uh, recording unit. We have uh, set uh, in the Gadiel Torrent uh, a goal to reach with the, uh, with the use and the, the construction of this recording unit which is the goal of implementing the volume estimation on board. Uh, if we will be able uh, to, to do this, of course, the recording unit will not only become a monitoring unit, but also uh, it will also be possible to use it as a warning tool. In which case? Well, I think that the video that I'm going to show you will, will uh, describe this very well. We are here, you will see um, um, a debris flow taking place um, along a motorway in particular the A22, uh, close to the uh, municipality of uh, Fortezza. This uh, debris flow takes place exactly above the motorway. Uh, there is a retention basin that keeps the, um, the volume deposited by the debris flow, by the debris flow preventing the, the material to reach the motorway. But of course, uh, the question is, uh, is that retention basin uh, large enough to contain all the material. So we, if we could put uh, upstream of this uh, retention basin um, a recording unit like that, we could be able, capable of man, me measuring and monitoring the volume uh, directly at the passage of the debris flow. Um, an answer to this question could be, could be given by the administration of the motorway and decide if it is possible, if it is necessary to stop the traffic or not. Here is the, the video. This is a video that can be, uh, find, uh, can be found on, on YouTube, is, very, is, is available. And um, you can see here the motorway and uh, you will see uh, the debris for arriving, here it is. And um, there is a comment of the tourist that uh, shot the video and that you, that you, you are listening. And they are, the tourists uh, that are shooting the video are very scared because they, th they see all this material arriving and the, the, the motorway is right down after this wall, this concrete wall. But of course they do not know that here, th this wall is uh, the, the wall that uh, is building, that is, has been constructed to build the, the, the retention basin. However, the question is how much material is the retention basin capable of containing? Who knows? Well, of course, the, the, it, the, the volume is known, but how much volume is coming down here? So the possibility to install a, a recording unit capable of measuring the volume could be a great help to, to, to warn and decide what to do. This is uh, just uh, the same location, uh, just shot from, from a greater distance. You can see here the wall and here the, wall, the motor car passing through. Just a few acknowledgements at the end of this talk. Uh, the, the, the study that you have uh, listened about has been funded through the European Territorial Co Cooperation Alpine Space Program 2007-2013, the SEDAL project in particular and by the autonomous province of Bolzano, the, the, in particular the Kineflow uh, project. Thank you very much. <laughs>